Welcome. This is first lecture of the course Probability and Statistics. It's a very important course. You will learn some basics of statistical inference in particular. That is very useful. In nutshell, I would say the whole industry runs on statistical analysis. So you can understand its importance. Okay. So all of you should learn the concepts on offer to you very carefully. So let's first go with the probability because without the knowledge of probability, we cannot learn statistics. Okay. I believe you are already familiar with some basic concepts of probability. So let me remind you some basic points related to probability. First, the fundamental principle of counting. What is it? If an operation can be performed in n1 ways and the second operation can be performed in n2 ways, then the two operations can be performed in n1 into n2 ways. This principle is logical. For example, say you have four trousers, three shirts. So how many dresses are possible from these given trousers and shirts, different dresses? Four into three, you understand? In 12 different ways, you have dresses. Suppose you have two ties also, then how many dresses? Two different ties. Of course, when I'm saying four trousers, all are different, three shirts, all are different, two ties, all are different. Then how many different dresses from these three? Four into three into two. Right? So this is fundamental principle of counting. Fundamental principle of counting also helps you in calculating permutations. What is permutation? Number of permutations of n distinct objects taken r at a time is given by, recall the formula, you are familiar with this notation npr, n factorial over n minus r factorial. Why is such a formula? See how fundamental principle of counting works here. R things are taken at, at one time. So you have R slots or R places. 1, 2, 3, up to R. Okay. First place can be filled in how many ways out of N things? n ways, second n minus 1 ways, third n minus 2 ways, and r with n minus r plus 1 ways. So how many total number of ways from the fundamental principle of counting? The product of these so number of permutations of n objects taken r at a time is given by this product. But this you can rewrite further. Multiply by n minus r factorial and divide also by n minus r factorial. You, you see the numerator is n factorial and denominator is n minus r factorial. So you understand. This is another notation that is shown here, PRN. It doesn't matter. This notation is also used for permutations. So you recall this formula for permutations. Permutation is basically arrangement of given things, given n things taken r at a time. See this example. In one year, three awards are there for research, teaching and service, which are to be given among 25 teachers of mathematics department, if each teacher can receive at most one award, how many possible selections are there? So, 
how many total number of teachers 25 so uh, research award goes to one teacher because each teacher can receive at most one award so first place can be filled by 25 ways correct 25 choices are there now one is occupied for second you have 24 for third 23 or you can say that it's same as 25 p3 number of permutations of three places or three teachers okay taking three teachers at a time out of 25 so you understand this okay so what do you get it's 13800 if you calculate it further so this is the case of permutations See next, how many different words can be made from the letters in the word statistics. Hope you also recall that if among these are things, say M1 things are identical, then you divide by M1 factorial. Likewise, among these are things, say M2 objects are also identical. Then you divide by M2 factor. Means for repetition, you divide by the same factorial. So how many different words can be made from this word statistics? How many total different words? How many letters are here? Ten letters. Ten letters. So how many different words are here? Ten factorial divided by how many repetitions? See T is coming three times, S is coming three times, I is coming two times. So ten factorial divided by three factorial two factorial into two factorial is it? Yes, so you get five zero four double zero. How it is the case of permutations? This time you are taking all objects means all uh, the letters under consideration at one time. Okay, so it's kind of eleven p sorry ten p ten. That means ten factorial. Because you get 10 factorial over 10 minus 10 factorial. 0 factorial. 0 factorial is 1, you know. And because of repetition, you are dividing this further by 3 factorial into 2 factorial into 2 factorial. Okay. Next, combinations. In combinations, you do the same thing, but this time, this arrangement doesn't matter. The order doesn't matter. So R things are alike, means permutations of N things taken R at a time, but these R objects are identical. So you divide this whole expression, the earlier expression for permutations by R factor. Say R objects are alike, then it is the case of combinations, NCR. Okay, so it is like this that you are given n things. So in how many ways you can select r things out of n things. Okay, so this is ncr. In this case order doesn't matter. That is the main thing. So it's a kind of repetition. So you divide by r factor. So this is no more. The case of permutations, these are combinations. See this formula here. Number of combinations of n distinct objects taken R at a time is. This is also a very common notation. NR. Or you can use this CRN. Alright. You see here R factorial is divided. Because R objects are alike. They are identical. See this example. In how many ways. 
Can two players be selected from a group of five players? Very simple problem. In how many ways? Five C two ways. Correct. So if you solve it, what do you get? Ten. So you understand the difference between permutations and combinations. In permutation, order matters, the arrangement matters. But in combinations, you are selecting a group. Order doesn't matter. Before going to the basic points of probability, I believe you are familiar with the cards because we will be dealing with the problems involving playing cards. A deck of 52 cards. Are you familiar with that? All of you, I think, have played cards and you are familiar with these pictures. So, mainly you should know the nomenclature among cards that we will use in the problems. In the first row, what is the first card? It's an ace. Yes. These four are aces and in the first row you are seeing the card of same type. This is a shoot. So how many shoots are there? Four shoots. What is first shoot that you are seeing here? Club. There are four shoots in first you are seeing club. Second, spade. Third, heart. And fourth, diamond. These are sometimes called face cards, jack, queen and king. Okay, these are face cards. There are four aces. In each shoot, there are 13 cards. If you think color-wise, there are two colors in the card, black and red. Okay. Two to ten, the cards are numbered. But 11th number is not here, it's J. J means the card at number 11. Jack, then Queen, then King. Okay. Now see the very basic definitions related to the concept of probability. What is a random experiment? An experiment whose outcome is random. For example, if you toss a fair coin, then in advance, we do not know whether hat will turn up or tail, right? Any of hat or tail can turn up. So this is a random experiment. So tossing a fair coin is a random experiment. Likewise, out of 52 cards, if you randomly draw a card, well suffered 52 cards, then which card is coming from in your draw you don't know in advance so that is also a random experiment what is die when i talk about die that means a die with six faces number one to six okay die can be more than six faces also even three faces four faces okay so die means six faces now, if I roll a die, then how many, uh, what is the possibility of getting a number on the top? Any of the six numbers? So it is also a random experiment. What is the sample space? Next definition. Set of all possible outcomes in the random experiment is sample space of the experiment. So, if, if you are tossing a fair coin, what is the sample space? S carrying two outcomes, head and tail. If you are rolling a die, what is there in the sample space? Six outcomes, six possible outcomes, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So you understand, if I, if I uh, toss two coins, sample space of a toss of two coins is HH, 
th ht and tt correct so i think you are already familiar with this just i'm doing a revision for you see this example tossing a coin and then tossing a coin for head and die for tail we need to construct sample space we need to write sample space in this experiment see it carefully what are the points in the sample space of this experiment tossing a coin means head or tail these are the possibilities then tossing again a coin for head if head appears then again toss a coin means again you will get head or tail if tail appears then roll a die means corresponding to tail further you have six points one two three four five six so how many different possibilities are here count all those hh ht then t1 to t6 right so this is the sample space in this experiment so you can create tree diagram like this in this kind of problems and write the sample space example of infinite sample space see this suppose a coin is tossed till the head appears coin is tossed till the head appears what are the possibilities it is possible that head turns up in the first attempt itself second possibility first attempt it is tail then again toss it and you get head so th then maybe in first two attempts it is tail and head turns up in the third attempt so it goes like this so it's an infinite sample space okay so sample space need not be finite it could be infinite also next event what is event any subset of the sample space defines an event consider the simplest one sample space of the toss of a fair coin what are its subsets empty set singleton set h singleton set t and s itself so all these are events correct all these are events any subset of the sample space defines an event what are elementary and compound events singleton subsets of the sample space are elementary or simple events okay and any other means carrying more than one point are compound events so if s is ht then h and t are elementary events ht is a compound event equally likely events the events which have equal chances of occurrence are equally likely all the events with the same chance of occurrence so if you are tossing a fair coin then head and tail both have same chances so the events h and t both are equally likely mutually exclusive two events are mutually exclusive if happening of one excludes the happening of the other same example you can consider if s equal to ht then h and t are mutually exclusive why because if head appears tail cannot appear you understand this more than two events are mutually exclusive if those are pairwise disjoint or pairwise mutually exclusive 
so be familiar with these definitions exhaustive events exhaustive events combine to give the full sample space they exhaust the whole sample space so if i consider this and uh, consider only two events h and t these are exhaustive because union of these gives the whole sample space okay then combination of events we can combine different events mathematically and interpret those what are combination c if a and b are any two events in a sample space then a union b implies either a or b or both a intersection b means both a and b and a minus b means a but not b and a prime means or a complement means not a or you can write a prime equal to s minus a so these are the combinations that we will use wherever required now is the time to say axioms of probability do you understand the meaning of axiom axiom is a mathematical statement without proof let me give you one example suppose i ask you prove that 1 plus 1 equal to 2 do you have a proof for it you will not find a proof of this statement anywhere because it is coming from an axiom of number theory if we add 1 to any natural number we get the next natural number it's an axiom in the number theory we accept that axiom after that we logically build other things in number theory so in every uh, discipline of mathematics or in every theory that we develop in mathematics there is some or the other set of axioms that we start with and then we build or develop the theory further so see the axioms of probability that we assume initially for any event the probability of the event lies in the closed interval 0 to 1 this is an axiom probability of the event phi is 0 and probability of the the, the event s or you can say the sample space s is 1 third axiom if a and b are mutually exclusive events then probability of a union b is pa plus pb mutually exclusive means these are disjoint okay mathematically the axiom 3 may be assumed for even arbitrary union of disjoint sets if a b c are mutually exclusive then a union b union c you can write their sum like this okay you understand that so these are three axioms of the theory of probability from these three axioms we can further derive some useful results see the first one that is the addition rule of probability its proof is given in the lecture notes you can see there i will not prove it here what is it probability of a union b is pa plus pb so this is very useful result that you will use in the problems addition rule of probability second it is the extended addition rule you can see it here pa union b union c is pa plus pb plus pc minus pa intersection b minus p b intersection c minus pc intersection a plus p a intersection b intersection c okay probability of a complement is 1 minus pa if a is a subset of b then pa is less than equal to pb this all four can be proved using the axioms of the probability now see this example read it 60% of the of all households 
get internet service from the local cable company 80% get television service from the company 50% get both services from that company if a household is randomly selected what is the probability that it gets at least one of these two services from the company and what is the probability that it gets exactly one of these services so how to do it first you need to define the events remember that when you are solving a problem of probability if events are not defined in the problem you need to define them otherwise you will lose marks so define the event a for internet service by the household that a be the event that the household gets internet service from the company b television service now read the statement and see what is given pa is given 0.6 60% pb 0.8 and pa intersection b is also given both services so p a intersection b is 0.5 now what is required in the first part probability that it gets at least one of these two services so at least one of these two means what probability a union b at least one of these means either a or b or both So apply the addition rule. What is the addition rule? P A plus P B minus P A intersection B. Solve it. Values are given to you. Point six plus point eight minus point five. How much? Write that. Point six plus point eight minus point five. Point nine. Yes, you are left with point nine. So this is first part. Second part, what is the probability that it gets exactly one of these services? Exactly one of these services means A but not B plus. B but not A. Mathematically, you can understand like this. But how to solve it? How to solve it? See what is given. A B. For A, it is point six. Overall point six for B point eight. What is common part? Point five. So how much is left this side? Point one. How much is left that side? Point three. Correct. Now see what is P A intersection B complement. A intersection B complement point one and A complement intersection B point so this is point one and A complement intersection B point three so finally it is point four see it here. Okay. 
So you understand the second part also. Now, we move to the classical formula of probability. Before that, you need to understand that how to assign probability and how classical formula is useful or what is the sense of classical formula. So probability can be assigned in different ways. There are two common ways which are frequently used or you can say there are two approaches. One approach is relative frequency approach. Relative frequency approach. What is it? In this case, we perform the experiment again and again and we see the frequency. Say we are tossing a coin 10 times. A coin is tossed 10 times and head appears 7 times. Appears 7 times. So what is the probability of getting head in the 11th toss? You will write 7 over 10. Means because this is the frequency in the previous experiments. So on the basis of this, you are writing the probability. This is the probability by relative frequency approach. But if you go with classical approach, I think you are already familiar with classical formula. According to classical approach, what should be the answer? Whenever you toss a coin, probability of getting head is 1 by 2. Right? So relative frequency approach is used as well as classical formula or classical approach is used. But classical approach is a kind of belief in the experiment means in the outcome what outcome you get that is the degree of belief but frequency is based on the past experience okay it carries the information of frequency of the event so anyway we will deal with the classical approach what is it read it let S be a sample space of a random experiment where all possible outcomes are equally likely. This word equally likely is important. You apply classical formula when all possible outcomes are equally likely means all elementary events have the same chances of occurrence. If A is any event in S, then probability of A is defined as Pa equal to number of elements in A divided by number of elements in S means Na over Ns. Okay. So see this example. Find the probability of getting exactly two heads in a toss of two fair coins. What is sample space in this case? This is a simple problem. You can do it yourself. Tossing two coins. Sample space is given by HH, HT, TH and TT. This is the sample space. What is the event that we need the probability? Let A be the event of getting exactly two heads. So A is the event of exactly two heads. So A carries only one point because exactly two heads appear in the first case only here, the first point in the sample space. So what is probability of A according to classical formula? 1 over 4 because number of elements in A is 1 and number of elements in S is 4. Next, see this problem in a poker hand consisting of 5 cards. Find the probability of holding 2 S's and 3 Jacks. 2 S's and 3 Jacks. Total how many cards are drawn? 5 cards out of 52. So how many total cases? 52 C5. Now among these 5 cards, 
possibility of getting or possibility of having two aces how many aces how many aces are there in a pack of cards four so two aces can be obtained in four four c two ways and uh, three jacks can be obtained in four c three ways out of four jacks correct so these are total number of ways these are total number of ways of selecting two aces and three jacks among five cards and these are total number of ways so this is the required probability in this case okay you can calculate it it is written here you can verify it now see this problem a die is loaded in such a way that an even number is twice as likely to occur as an odd number If e is an even, that a number less than four occurs on a single toss of the die. Find P. Read this statement carefully, because here the events are not equally likely. Read the first line. Events are not equally likely. Means you cannot apply classical formula here. It's a different problem. What is written? even number is even number is twice as likely to occur as an odd number so say w is the probability of getting odd number w is probability of odd number so what is probability of getting even number 2w is probability of getting even number correct so how many numbers are there on the die 1 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 so for one what is the probability in the sample space there are six points 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 in case of single die so what is the probability assigned to each each event for odd number w even number 2w like this So what is total probability? W plus two W plus plus W plus two W plus W plus two W. This should be one because probability of S is one, right? That is that is an axiom of the probability. Sum of probabilities of all elementary events is one. We know it. So from this we can get W. How much? Nine W. Equal to one. That is W equal to one over nine. Now, what is the event T? A number less than four. E means number less than four. So, which probabilities you need to collect? Number less than four means one, two, three. So, for these, what is the sum of probabilities? W plus two W plus W. That means four W W we have already calculated. So final answer for probability of E is four over nine. You can see the solution here. So here classical approach is not applicable. That you need to notice. Can do this problem also yourself from a pack of pairs of cards. One card is drawn. Find the probability that the card is either a king or an ace. Either a king or an ace. Think about it. Let A be the event for getting a king. B be the event of getting an ace. What do you need here? Probability A union B. What is probability A union B in this case? P A plus P B only. 
minus p intersection b also you should write but there is nothing in common in a and b because a's cannot be king nothing in common a and b are disjoint sets that's why this, you need not to write this minus p intersection b what is p a getting a king out of 52 cards or by 52 pb getting an ace probability of getting an ace that is also 4 by 52 so you get 2 over 30 next problem two dies are tossed once find the probability of getting an even number on the first die or a total of it think over it Two dies are tossed once. What is the sample space for toss of two dies? One, 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 two, like this, right? One to six. Then two, one, two, 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 six. Continue like this. Last one, six, one, two, six, six. So how many points are there in the sample space? 36. So here, find the probability of getting an even number on the first tie or a total of it. So define your events. Let A be the event that even number appears on the first tie. And B be the event that sum of the numbers on two dies is one. So what are the points in A? Even number on the first tie. Even number. Even number means on the first die 2 1 to 2 6, then 4 1 to 4 6, 6 1 to 6 6. How many points are there in A? 18. Or a total of 8. So which are the points in B? Total of 8 means which points? are having total 8, sum 8, 2, 6, then 3, 5, then 4, 4, after that 5, 3 and 6, 2, correct? What is A intersection B? This carries all points where first entry is an even number. So intersection B carries 2, 6, 4, 4 and 6, 2. So what is probability A union B in this case? Because this is the probability that you need. PA plus PB minus PA A intersection B. What is P8? It carries 18 points. It carries 18 points. So 18 over 36, B carries how many points? 5 points, so 5 over 36, minus P intersection B, 3 over 36. So you get 5 over 9, okay? Next is conditional property. Conditional probability is very important. See how is it defined. The conditional probability of A when B has occurred, an event has already occurred, using that information, the probability of A is the conditional probability. So how we denote conditional probability? Probability A given B. This symbol you can read probability A given B or probability of A when B has already happened. Mathematically, conditional probability is given by probability A intersection B divided by PB. So this formula also comes logically. It's a definition. You can see the lecture notes. But this formula is important. Probability of A given B is probability A intersection B divided by PB. See this problem. The probability that a regular 
regularly scheduled flight departs on time is PD equal to 0.83. The probability that it arrives on time is PA equal to 0.82. And the probability that it departs and arrives on time is probability B intersection A equal to 0.78. So these statements are given to you. Find the probability that a plane, first part, arrives on time given that it departed on time. Given that departed on time. How to do it? Given that, the condition is given. Condition is given. So how to write it mathematically? Arise on time given that departed on time. So using the formula for conditional probability, you should write it probability A intersection B divided by probability D. Now probability A intersection D is given to you 0.78 and divided by PD means 0.83. So likewise you can cal uh, calculate the probability in the second case departed on time given that it has arrived on time. So this time probability D given. You can see the calculations here. Okay. So it's simple. One more uh, example I can give you. Say if you are drawing a card from a pack of 52 cards and say this card is a spade. One card is drawn randomly from a pack of 52 cards and this is spade. Now this card is not replaced. Card is not replaced. Spade card is not replaced. From the remaining 51 cards, again a card is drawn. What is the probability that it is a spade? How to calculate it? Because some information is given to you. What is given? One spade is drawn from the pack of cards. That means, what is the probability of that? 13 by 52. After that, from the remaining 51 cards, again you need a spade. So how many spades are left? 12. So 12 over 51. This is also coming from the conditional probability. See this rule. Multiplication rule of probability. What is it? Probability of happening of two events A and B together is probability B into probability A given to you. This formula comes from the conditional probability formula. Okay, you can see here also. So this is multiplication rule of probability. Okay. So it's the same problem that I've already told uh, told you, discussed with you. Solution is given here, but you can see the solution here also defining the events. A be the event that the second card is paid, B be the event that the first card is paid. So using the multiplication rule, you can get the probability in this problem. Okay, so I will continue this discussion in the next lecture. So in this lecture what you have learned mainly, the basic definitions related to probability and the addition rule, multiplication rule, the axioms of probability. So be prepared with these basics in the next lecture. Okay. Thank you.